Hello, good morning everyone on Facebook and Instagram. I hope everyone's having a great day today and I'll tell you this morning has been crazy. It's been totally crazy, but it's been a good crazy. So I'm glad everyone's on here today on Facebook and, and Instagram as well. Hope you guys had a great Merry Christmas. I really mean that. I hope I, it was just everything you've asked for and more. So I'm excited today to be with you guys today and um, not going to be too long to, uh, with you guys today. I've got a couple of things to do. Uh, for family, so I'm excited about that as well. But today I want to talk about a little bit, uh, go over my book this month, which is Finding Your Place and the workbook. And the workbook, like I said, is just phenomenal. But this has sold folks like crazy. Like during the Christmas holidays, we've sold so many of them because so many people have really just been telling me, you know, I don't want to go into 2022 the same way I did 2021 or, you know, 2020. I don't want to be able to go into something that is, you know, where I'm just sort of blindsided, you know, and I think that's the main thing is understanding that when you go into a new year, you can't go in there blindsided. You know, let me explain this to you. One of the things I think we have a misconception about is, you know, we always say, you know, praying in the new year. That's powerful and we should pray in the new year. However, you also need to be able to have guidelines, um, you know, uh, guidelines, boundaries, structure, you know, vision boards, uh, you know, understanding exactly what you're going into 2022 with. Because you have to have a type of maybe definition or maybe a slight place of understanding of what the new year is going to happen, right? Because here's what happens is if you don't go into the new year without some type of structure as far as maybe an idea, a gold nugget, a revelation, whatever, you're still going to be blindsided no matter how much you pray because you have to remember we have to coincide with everything in the scriptures that deals with you know prayer you know reading you know scriptures you know definitely getting in our spirit you know hearing from God but we also have to be able to understand without a vision the people perish and knowing that we look at this and say you know, without a vision, we perish. That means that we can pray to the cows come home, right? But action without action, when you pray, if you don't have action behind that faith of the prayer with some type of structure or definition, or let's say a gold nugget of revelation to get into for the new year, as far as having a type of your vision, a part of your vision, you're still going to perish. And prayer is not going to save you from that. Now think about that for a moment, because most people think that prayer is this magic wand where we pray it, God just does it all. That's not even biblical. The prayers of the righteous avail much. It doesn't say prayers of the righteous are going to be manifested much. Think about that for a moment. It doesn't say the prayers of the righteous shall be manifested much. It says the prayers of the righteous avails, availeth much. That means that God's like, you know, hey, it's good that you pray because you're acknowledging me, you're bringing it before my throne, but you also need to realize you have to have a vision and know how to be able to, to cultivate a vision, but also know how to work with um, substance that I've given you to where you can expand it. See, here's what I realize. God is not going to expand it for you. God is not going to manifest it for you necessarily. It's the prayers of the righteous that avail availeth much. But then also it's the faith without works is dead, but also you get into the place where you have to have the action and the vision behind it. Because if you don't have a vision, you, you, we can study that from David, Ezekiel, Moses, um, Jesus himself, you know, so many people that is a sort of a requirement of fulfilling destiny by getting a vision, cultivating that, and knowing what tools to work with. Are you with me? So that's why I'm saying prayer alone doesn't do it for you. You know, it's not a magic wine, all right? We're not in Harry Potter right now, all right? So that's why you have to understand that what I've done as far as this ministry is I've helped cultivate um, what we consider um, structures or parts of a vision that will help you and sort of jettison you into understanding what 2022 is going to be like for you, all right? To know how to find your place. You know, one of the things I, I tell people is I don't write out of just sort of like this, you know, revelation, that, <clears throat> excuse me, that is like untouchable and reachable, you know? I say this to people. I say, if you do a, how can I say this? If you write a book, <clears throat> never write a book that has not been part of your experience. Think about that. If you write a book, do it from a place that is your experience. You've explored it, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So, therefore, if you haven't explored it, then you shouldn't be writing on it, right? Because then you're writing on something that has not been in your experience, and if you, the author, can't experience the actual thing you're writing on as far as the revelation, 
then how do you know it's going to work for other people, right? Because you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Your testimony should always triumph your book as an author. Come on, guys, right? Your testimony should always be the reason for the book. Your book should be the, over, should be the overflow of your experience of that revelation, right? If not, then you're not really authorized to write on the subject. Think about that, spiritually speaking, because then you haven't been able to master or gone through the valley of what it took for that gold nugget to manifest within your life and your reality. So manifestation is, is separate from prayer and vision is separate from prayer because you have to have all of them that you, you, you sort of uh, work together. You know, those things work together for the good. Those things work together for the good to bring forth your good new year. And therefore, you have an experience from that. So one of the things I've written on, uh, you know, on my books is I write out of the experience to say, hey, when people say, oh, that law of attraction is unbiblical. And I said, that's because, you know, you're suffering from lack of knowledge. You have a lack of knowledge on the, air, on the area of it being so scriptural from everyone. I can mention stories in the Bible where it happened because thoughts became things, manifestation, believing your, the belief system you have, the, the faith you have that moves mountains. So basically, law of attraction is nothing more than faith that moves mountains, believing in your heart. You know, um, you know, faith had without works is dead. All that is what we call the the coin turn of law of attraction. So what we do is we be able to bring in this this part of um, the application to know how to find your place to where in 2022 you're not finding yourself saying I'm praying all the time, but I don't know where I belong. Because prayer is not your magic wand, right? And so you have to have all the tools of God that work together for your good. All right? It's not just bad things work together for your good. It's accumulation of all the tools of God that work together for your good. Seeing part of your visual, hearing the things that you need to hear, having an ear to hear. All these cultivate and help birth, birth forth, but also help feed into your vision for your new year to where you can have a platform, spiritually speaking, or, or a foundation in your new year, and you can run with it, right? That's a place of God. That's the power of God working in your life to guarantee you that you will have a prosperous year, but not a prosperous year always just financially, but a prosperous year soulishly and spiritually as well. So finding your place is something out of my experience that God has given me out of revelational things that I know works because it's worked for me. You know, that's why during a pandemic, I was I was doing great financially during the pandemic. In fact, I never got COVID, you know, uh, that's not, that's neither here or there. That has nothing to do with, you know, your, your faith or anything. I'm just making a point to say that, you know, I really had a vision. I stuck with my vision and my my vision supplied my need during 2021, right? And even some of 2020 when it, when it was, uh, you know, uh, COVID started. So with that being said, you have to think about the, the, the um, what am I trying to say? The statistics. Statistically, you look at things or people or substances or whatever, or places, you know, whatever. You have to look at things statistically when economy is going down or when, let's say, let's say COVID or life sort of throws a low ball at us. When that happens, you have to look at those who are succeeding or successful or succeeding past, you know, the hard times because those are the people that you know can glide through bad experiences because you know that they're that somehow the structure that God's given them is feeding them. We can look at Joseph who prospered during, you know, the famine, and, you know, in, in those days and he was in Egypt. We can look at Daniel, we can look at so many people that God sort of sustained them during hard times because there was a secret they knew, which was knowing how to think, how to believe, how to pray, but also how to be able to get out of a situation by using the sword of their vision. I was talking to a major minister the other day that you guys, every one of you would know if I mentioned his name because he's one of my best friends. But I mentioned, I said, we forget the power of the sword of attention. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. I want everyone to think about this for a moment. We forget about a powerful tool of God, which is called the sword of our attention. Because where your attention flows, energy goes, right? And so knowing that, you have to think about where my attention is, I am feeding into that, that thing I'm giving attention to, and it's expanding. If I focus on this, it's going to expand. If I focus on demonic things, it shall sp expand in my life. If I focus on heavenly things, it shall expand in my life. Think about Thomas. Think about Thomas who was being, I think it was Thomas who 
was being stoned. And all of a sudden, he looked up while he was being stoned. The heaven, you know, and the heavens opened up, and he and he saw the Son of God. He was focusing because the focus. Why does God give people visions in the Bible even during hard times and struggles? Why? even to the point where they're dying like Thomas was because their focus expands and it makes it bigger in their life. So what, what God wanted Thomas to see and to focus on was the heavenly realm of where he was about to transition into because of his situation of being stoned. Think about that because God gives visions to people to say, here, think about this. Here, expand on this. This will feed into you're the next, we'll say the next generation or the next season of your life or the next year of your life because visions and dreams and all and prophecies, all these things are, are not given to say they're guaranteed to happen because they're not guaranteed to happen. What makes them more of a guarantee to happen and function and flow and manifest in your, in your reality is the fact that you're focusing on them, you're giving them the tool of your attention that it causes the, you know, an expansion. Is it interesting how we notice where, where we can, I think it was Thomas, I think it was Daniel, uh, I mean, Paul, so many people had this encounter of God, and, and, and nine times out of ten, well, in fact, I want to say ten out of ten, but nine times out of ten when people had a vision of heaven, notice how it's phrased. It is, the heavens opened up. The heavens cleared away, you know, um, the dove descended on you. So the heavens opened up. What does opening mean? It means it's an opening of expansion. So something is expanding. So when you look at the heavens, you have to realize something should always be expanding by what you're focusing on. So if I, my attention is on ex, the, the expansion of God, then if I focus on God, I'll get the expansion of the open heaven of a bigger God in my life, my reality, right? If I focus on, if I'm, if I'm studying all the time about, you know, demons, and I'm always saying, you know, strategies of demons, you know, uh, you know, a demonic steal and this demonic, what happens is I'm opening up, I'm literally opening up the portal or the heaven of the devil, Think about that because I'm giving my attention, which is one of the greatest tools God's given us, into this thing. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to expand. Where my attention is is where the power of expandedness is going to take place. Think about that. Now, this is cool because, once again, you're not, you're not going to get a lot of listeners to listen to this kind of message because they know it's biblical. Because a lot of times people like the, you know, I'm going to give you five strategies to beat the devil. You know, over, And my thinking is, and a lot of these people who still move that direction, are still struggling. Let's give them the alternative to not struggle, to learn to be an overcomer. Let's give them the tool and the weaponry to know how to be the overcomer because that's the main goal of Christ, right? Is to not get not focus on the demonic, but focus on the heavenlies of where God lies or you know is in our lives and what and the good things that are flowing down from God, how to bring our attention and our awareness to those good things. Why? So the heavens of the good things will expand and open up. How many just get just got that? That's the power of God's kingdom. That's the power of God's kingdom. And think about it. That's why you don't hear a lot of the devil when it deals with Jesus. You heard a couple of parts. You heard a couple of maybe one or two of, of Paul, Peter too. You don't see them going around binding and loosing and getting strategies from the devil. And where's my strategy because the devil's taking this. You never hear that. Isn't that cool? Think about that. How many times have you ever heard Peter, Paul, James, John ever say, okay, we got to get a strategy of the demonic. They're trying to steal this in my life. You don't hear that. Charismatic people need to realize what is not biblical versus what is biblical. These men of God were taught from, from the kingdom of Christ in an, in an awareness of the kingdom, focusing on the kingdom. Because Jesus knew if I cause them to focus on the kingdom, then that means the expandedness of their life, the kingdom's domain, the king's domain, would automatically crush the head of the, of the enemy, the serpent. Why? Because my focus is on that in which I want to expand. And the expandedness of that that power of what Jesus told me to focus on, which is the kingdom of God's in me, the kingdom of God's around you. Focus on the kingdom. The kingdom of God is like this, because he knew if I gave people the power of the kingdom, that power of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost would crush every, you know, the enemy in their lives right there, and they would not have such a problem with what they call the enemy, because it would not be an issue. How many just got that? See, this won't preach in certain places because people don't want to hear that. The expandedness, the awareness of what you focus on. If you, if my expandedness is on the things Jesus spoke on, which was, the, you know, the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like that. The kingdom's in you. The kingdom's around you. Kingdom's everywhere. 
Kingdom of God is everywhere. So if you think about Jesus, Jesus was this amazing teacher, practitioner of law of attraction. He was the amazing, powerful savior of knowing the fact that I'm, I'm telling you folks, what you focus on will expand. So he, he got their, their mentality, all the disciples, he got them to focus on the kingdom, the kingdom. Why? The parables were about the kingdom focusing. Vision, 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 visualization. Jesus was the biggest visualization person that ever walked this planet because he always said the kingdom of God is like this. Bam, there's a visual. These women over here that are, you know, carrying the lamp, one's full, one's not. These workers over here. Notice that Jesus gave them visualizations. Jesus was all into visualization, folks. He was, he, Jesus was all about visualization because he shifted the paradigm of the, of the human brain to say, hey, look, I want you to see visually because I know if you see it, you'll believe it. If you see it, you'll expand it and the kingdom will expand more in you and more upon you and you won't have to worry about some devil this and devil that. I mean, I know ministers who have literally, you know, page after page of of strategies of what to do to get here and to get there and go to this heaven and go to this place and and all of a sudden you're thinking, have we got away from biblical teachings? Because you do not want anyone to focus on some type of enemy or some type of devil by giving them the power of, of moving in that realm. When Jesus said, if you focus on the kingdom, the expandedness of the open heaven, why? Because if you focus on the heavens, that's why the Bible says what? You know, and, and, and Timothy looked up, Paul looked up, you know, and, and they saw the heavens open up because they saw it. When you visualize something, it expands and opens up. I want to get that through your brain to understand the power to visualize, the power to see expands the heavens of what it is you're wanting to focus on in your life, and you're going to be an overcomer. You're going to be an overcomer because think about in, even the book of Revelation where it talks about, you know, um, he overcomes this, he overcomes. And notice how it's talking about overcoming things of life. Are you with me? Because the kingdom just crushes anything that does not be, needs to be standing in your life. The kingdom, the king's domain is the expandedness of your focus and your visualization because it's in you. And when you expand this, there's no room in the end. Hello, Mary and Joseph. There's no room in this end for anything that is, oh, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, oh, the devil. You know, uh, this is this and this is it. There's no room in the end for that. Didn't we learn that from Christmas, the story? You know, hey, there's no room in the end over here to, you know, to, for them to birth forth, you know, Jesus. And so if you think about it, this is our end, I and end. This right here is my end. And it's too full of the kingdom to be able to focus on anything else. And so there's nothing that can come, uh, come onto me or in me because my body is full of light and love and power and vibrating the, the power of the residency of the kingdom. So why should I teach on the demonic? Think about it. Why should I deal with anything contrary to what Jesus spoke about? And that's why you've got to be very careful in the charismatic move to know, is this biblical? Think about that. The kingdom of God is more um, visualization, hearing, seeing, touching, smelling, reach up and touch his garment, you know, I shall be healed. Uh, believing, faith believing, decreeing, affirmations, speaking it, thinking it. That's the whole conglomeration of the message of Jesus. And yet we would rather take that aside because these things cause us to what? Find your place. Think about it. Seeing, feeling, touching, smelling, writing, hearing. These things help us find our place. Instead of, I got to give you a strategy to the devil. I got to give, I got to tell you how to be able to come. No, 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 no. All that's rubbish. It's, it, it's not true. Because what's truth is what sets you free is the truth, not a strategy. Think about this. I'm, I'm on a strategy, but not some teaching on how to overcome seven steps of the devil. No. The Bible makes it plain. It makes it very plain. The truth sets you free. What is the truth? Your truth. What is your truth that God has embedded in you that works for you from his kingdom that expands your life and brings you into a place of overcoming awareness? That, my friend, is your truth. Are you with me? That's the power of God's kingdom is the truth that sets you free. And the truth is that, my, that I am... The kingdom, the kingdom is consumed in me. Everything around me is part of God's presence. So therefore, if I think that way, then every knee 
of every thought contrary to uh, that's negative to, to contrary to the positivity and the power of God's kingdom and light must bow its knee. We're so we're so used to seeing people's bodies, their knee, everyone bowing to God, and and that that'll happen. However. That which is first is natural, but afterwards that which is spiritual, which means everything has implication of natural and spiritual. And if that's the case, that means spiritually speaking, every knee, every thought, every paradigm, every mindset, every wrong teaching on warfare, every wrong teaching you've had on the devil, the devil, the devil, 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 you know, that all these knees have to bow to what you're seeing and what you're believing in your truth, because your truth will break the, the chains of all this stuff that is contrary to the word of God and contrary. Here's what's cool. And it should be contrary to your belief. If your belief believes that way, it shall be it unto you. If my belief system is every day I'm attacked by the devil, every day I'm under warfare, every day this, every day this, the devil is trying to steal my assignment, that's not even biblical. I, I mean, I'm so sorry, guys, but that's not even biblical. It's, there's no word to say he's trying to steal your assignment. And it doesn't mean it does. it's not true. I'm saying that if you want a future that is bright, that God promised you, I'm going to tell you the secret to success, and that is this. What are you believing? Where are your where is your attention and your thoughts headed? Because what you think and believe is fact. Let me give you a great example. Great example. If you think of people like Joe Losin and Joyce Meyer, let's go there for a moment. Um, notice that you never hear of their warfare beliefs, and you never hear them saying, you never hear Joel Osteen get on the stage saying, this morning I was attacked by the devil, and I, I had to do warfare, stand on my head, I, I had to walk on my tippy toes, and I had to get my strategies book out. You don't. You know why? You know why you don't hear about Joyce Meyer? Because they focus on visualizing what it is they want to put it in your brain. And what needs to be put in your brain is the kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom. Your whole, your whole, your whole. The kingdom is here. The kingdom of God. Focus on this. You want to manifest success and victory. It's interesting because, and if you look at people who were into warfare that, that intently, notice the truth. How many of you know this? They're always under warfare. They're always being attacked because your belief system will open up the realm of whatever it is that you're creating in that belief system in that realm, and it shall be that unto you. The Bible says that. It shall be it unto you. What you believe shall be it unto you. Your traditions make the word of God in an effect. What is a tradition? A tradition is a belief system. Oh, my grandmom always did this. That belief system is making it happen for you. And when he said, when, when, he, when, when the Bible says, um, um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. When the Bible says your traditions make the word of God in that effect, it doesn't mean traditions are more powerful than the word it may, of your declarations. It means that your beliefs, your traditions that you've set up here, every every you know spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, every principality is coming from the word principle. Principalities is not a demon, it's a principle. That's what the word means in the Aramaic. Principalities come from the word principles in my heavens. And these principles of traditions, if I don't cast them down and allow the fluidity of God, the fluid of the kingdom flowing and all good things flowing down the Father of lights, if I don't allow that to be my premises of my belief system, then the, then the principle that's here of my tradition, it doesn't mean it's more powerful than the word that I believe or the word of God. It means that my principle and my traditions have blocked the power that could flow in my life. It could flow, it could, it's stopping the fluidity or the flow of the power of the good things that are trying to flow down to me and embed itself in me. This is the power of God's kingdom, folks. Your belief system is what you believe and what you will carry out. If you believe in the conspiracy theories, you will find them on YouTube, you'll find them on Facebook, you'll find them in public. If you focus on a yellow Volkswagen, you'll see more yellow Volkswagens throughout the day. If you believe, no, you can't trust anybody, people will take advantage of you at the grocery store, clerks will rip you off, somebody will rob something in your car. Let me tell you something. I know this to be a fact. I've seen it. I've witnessed these things, folks. If you don't trust people, people will take advantage of you. If you trust people, people will not take advantage of you so much.
It doesn't mean your life's going to be perfect and everybody's going to be, you know, wonderful and great, but it does mean you will attract and you will feel the acceleration of God's kingdom bringing forth an, an expandedness in your awareness and you'll find yourself saying, you know what, hey, I'm getting more people that I trust in my life. There's so many people I trust things with. There's so many people that are blessing me today. There's so many people I can bless today, you know? Because when you get wrapped up in a world of your belief, folks, your power of your belief and your tradition and that mindset of whatever it is you're focused on, it will expand and it shall make sure it draws and brings people around you that will be similar in likeness of your belief system and it shall be that unto you. And your entire life will no longer be based on the devil, the devil, the devil, or God, God, God. It'll be based on your belief system that you've idolized to run your your life because you don't realize as a co-creator in God we have to remember we are co-creating with God but then outside of co-creating we're also creating a world that when we're we stand alone here's the good and bad when we stand alone without the presence of God what happens is our minds start creating a disastrous world because it can't create a good world because the divine nature of God is not is not working with you because you collaborate with God and that nature that your of your creatorship is going to bring total destruction to you and you can bind the devil all day long and it's never going to work because the only devil you've created is a devil of your paradigm and your tradition that is destroying and idolizing your own life that's why the God the Bible says thou shall have no other gods before me because God there's no other gods besides God right if no other God are besides God, then is that scripture unbiblical? Is that scripture wrong? No. He's not saying other gods. If Here's the cool thing. Here's the thing. If God could call Buddha or or uh, Shiva or, which is, which is Hindu, or um, I studied world religions in, 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 in you know, Bible, clothes, Bible class, and I still do to this very day. If you think about all these different, you know, um, uh, Lazi wasn't a god, but I mean, you know, there's people who, you know, if you if you think about all these people that were just sort of people, but yet people turn them into their god. Let me explain, let me say something to you guys. And if you're if you're religious, you will now. If you're religious and you, you say you're, you're I'm gonna knock over I'm gonna knock over your sacred cow, or you're gonna want to exit this conversation. But here's the truth of the matter. Uh, Buddha was named Sardatha. He was a typical man that wanted to do good upon earth. He never claimed to be God, never wanted to be God, nothing. He, he, his, his, his methodology was teachings of how to think in your life. But yet when people idolized Sardatha and made him into the Buddha, then when God says, I shall know the gods before me, doesn't mean he was a God. God is not threatened by Hinduism. He's not threatened by Buddhism. He's not threatened by Islam. He's not threatened by anything because he knows he's God. And there's no other gods before him. So why would he call these other gods gods when he knows they're not gods? That's what people don't, don't think about. Why would God say there's other gods when there's not other gods? Because if there's other gods, then how can you be God of gods? And who made these other gods if they're gods? That's a tongue twister for you. Food for thought. Why? Because God never said that there's other gods. He says, you shall have no other gods before me, which means if you take that and the rest of the Ten Commandments and take it and line it up biblically with the New Testament, you understand what the point he's making. And that is your paradigm that you're making into gods, your gods, is the one that I'm Lord over. And if you believe in the God and what you're believing in, you put your belief system in, your world is going to be under and subject to that God of idolization that you've created. And what happens is your world will become disastrous. God's not going, I'm threatened by your God. You know, no. What he's saying is he says, the God you've created within yourself of what you're idolizing, no matter what, no matter if it's a belief system, a tradition, a theology, or, you know, needing to be corrected, no matter what it is, people have an idolization of sleeping every night. I mean, there's some people, there's a lot of people who they, they would rather, they, they're like sleep, sleep, I need sleep, I need sleep, I need sleep, becomes an idol to them. And that's why they're always sleeping. Hello. You know, uh, you think of so many different th crazy things, whatever, you know, for example, let me give you guys a great example. I'm, I'm getting away from my book, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm not. I'll tell you why. When people, when I, if I walk into somebody's house and I'm very, very into modern stuff, I mean, my house is like throwing up modern LA style, like white, you know, modern, you know, the, I mean, I am like the, the king of modern. Like I love modern stuff. Like if you watch Selling Sunset or if you watch a uh, million dollar listing, which I'm, I'm hooked to majorly, you know, uh, and you see these guys and you see these LA style houses, that's my house. Like you'd be like, oh my God, this, that's what I like. 
So if I go into a house like that and I see a little, let's say, if it's very modern, I see a little maybe white little statue, you know, ceramic statue of a white Buddha they got at Z Gallery and it's sort of part on their, you know, over here on their table, you know, with their library and their other decors they get from Z Gallery or Pier 1 or whatever. You know, I'm not going to go in there and say, oh my God, you've got the devil in here. There's a Satan in this room. Do you worship Buddha? You know why? Because I'm not that ignorant. I would say, oh, that's decor. I get that. I get that. Now, if I saw an idol, if I saw a table that has, you know, Buddhas on it with candles and all this incense, you know, and, and it was an altar, that's a different story. I mean, you know, that's what they believe. Hey, you know, be under them, whatever. My point being is you got to know what God is. A God is something you idolize and you put before you. And, you, and, and it becomes a part of you. And it's not even about religion. It's about things in your life. There's, there's an idolization of, of overeating. Did you know that? There are people who idolize food. And when God said, I shall not have no other gods before me, he's not talking about God's Hindu gods. I mean, you know, it might be, I don't know. But what he's talking about is the fact that I'm, I, I, well, I am over the God that you've idolized with your overeating of food. I am the God over the idol that you're, you're possession of money, whatever. So with all that being said, digging myself out of the rabbit hole, with all that being said, you have to understand that the kingdom of God and Jesus was nothing more than about seeing, believing, touching, smelling, hearing. He who has an eye to see, he who has an ear to hear. If I can reach up and touch his garment, think about that. Touch, you know, uh, you, you, you hear things like the Rose of Sharon. You hear these senses because God is, Jesus is saying, your awareness will come from your thinking process. And so my focus is to give you the kingdom. Tell you what it looks like. See this parable. See this parable. Kingdom of God's like this. So with all that being said, you have to understand the power, the power of what you want in your life to find your place depends on and is determined by your belief system. And one thing I do in this book, and I want to encourage all of you, you get a chance to go, order my book, Warfare. Attract, Stop Attracting Warfare. Stop Attracting Warfare was one of my classic books that will break every sacred cow on warfare and tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, what the word devil means and tell you what the word demons mean. Because I'm here to tell you folks, I'm here to tell you the power of God is the structure for our eternity, for our life in the sense of vibrating that power of love and life and light and grace and mercy and the things that Jesus taught us. And so when you go into 2022, you've got to understand and understand the revelation of what, if I'm going to find my place, I'm not going to be finding it in, I bind this devil away from my new year. I bind this devil away this. I bind the devil away. You're still going to go into 2022 and you're not going to have what you want. Because once again, it's not just about prayer. It is about the power to understand visualizing. Without a vision, I will perish in 2022. I find my place, but what I'm seeing in my spirit, man, of what God has placed in there that I'm feeding my attention to, counteracting all my negative thoughts that would counteract my vision and suck the life out of it because that my friend is what happens to many of us there's spiritual vampires that are sucking and draining the life out of every one of you in your vision and it's not the devil it is the issue of your attention because where your attention goes feeds the power of nourishment where i where I, what i don't focus on starves the nourishment and causes it to die that's a spiritual principle. So you've got to begin to understand this. So I'm telling you guys, if you want to have a good year, I want to encourage you. I want to help you. Okay? You can order, uh, in fact, I, I would say order my book, Stop uh, Attracting uh, Warfare. I would say get my, my book and, uh, and, uh, and workbook, which I'm going to talk about maybe in a couple weeks, on creating your soul map, which is dead dead on about a vision board for the new year. But, but, but really, today, the main thing you need is where you're going to belong, where you're going to be in 2022. And in the workbook, I deal with questions that will help you to find out what you believe, and you can answer those questions to help yourself in the workbook. I know I always like love the, love these rabbit trails, but all this is what I've been spirit led to talk about today. Spirit just led me to say all this stuff today because of the fact you got to know where you are and you got to know what you believe. You got your belief, folks, will, will alter your in entire life. Your belief is your truth, and if your belief is off from a truth, it's not going to set you free. No matter how many times you scream at the devil and bind him and stand on your head and and do prayer walks, tongues, sage, whatever you want, whatever you do, and your charismatic walk, it's not going to work. Because Jesus would ask you, "What's in your heart? What are you thinking in your heart?" Because as a man thinketh here, my world's going to be what I'm thinking right here. That's the key thing. 
I love every one of you. I want to help you. Set up a life coaching session with me if you if you want more details. Get, get a session with me. I, I'm booked every week, but I would love to for my staff to fit you in there. And definitely order this right now. The link's right here. Finding your place book and workbook. If I can get it right here. Order that today. You can just download it within minutes uh, of the ebooks, or you can order a hard copy. I don't mind at all, and I'd be glad to autograph it for you. I love each and every one of you. Have a blessed, happy new year, and let's go into new year with some knowledge and some wisdom, because wisdom's crying out, and get a vision, guys. So your 2022 will be a dynamic year. I love every one of you. Have a blessed, wonderful day today.